Histiocytic disorders, as you know, are uncommon in general, which is one of the reasons why people have so much trouble getting physicians to diagnose and to know something about the disease. And then you have a, rare, a group that's even rarer, which are known as the rare histiocytic or uncommon histiocytic disorders. But of course, when you have it or have a, a family member with it, um, it it's obviously becomes really important. Um, so it is an interest of mine um, and a couple of other people in the room. And I thought what I'd do is try and give you a little bit of an overview of where these disorders fit in and then we were just going to discuss a few of them but are very happy to answer questions on if anybody ha has an interest in any of the others. So basically as you heard from Dr. Egela this morning that the histiocytoses are defined as a disorder due to excess accumulation of this cell called histiocyte which is actually a, a misnomer because it's as, as he mentioned it's a number of cells that are really important in the immune system. But in general, each disorder is defined or called uh, by name by the major cell. So Langerhans cell histiocytosis is, of course, called that because the major cell is the Langerhans cell, um, which is one of the major cells in the that will you know that for processing foreign proteins to present to the immune system. So the, the uncommon histiocytic disorders are basically anything that is not LCH and is not HLH. So it tends to be, to be sort of fairly easy because it encompasses everything else um, uh, in this group of disorders. So this is a really uh, difficult looking slide, but I'm not going to, of course, go into it in any detail. But um, I d somebody did ask this morning about where they fit in. So. Um, a just very brief overview, that, um, as Dr. Egelis showed you, they all start from one single cell in the bone marrow, and then depending really what the immune system needs at that particular point in time, you sort of apply, it applies growth factors to the cell and moves it along a pathway that will develop into a Langerhans cell, or along the other side to the macrophage, and of course the disease associated with this is LCH, and the disease associated with that, the major disease is HLH. One of the other diseases though that has this characteristic but has another foreign protein on its surface is this condition that you heard about from a couple of people this morning which is known as sinus histiocytosis with massive lymphadenopathy, a really great name but it is the, the other name for it is reside Dorfman disease and, and dis, you know, a disease described by two gentlemen, doctors Rezai and Dorfman. Um, and then there's another cell um, which um, is somewhere in between these two and associated with that cell are the major uncommon histiocytic disorders and that's the juvenile xanthogranuloma family of disorders which includes erdheim chester disease in adults. Now the reason I wanted to show you this slide really is because of these arrows here which shows that there is movement each way between these pathways. So if for example at a particular moment in time the immune system needs more Langerhans cells, it can apply growth factors to a cell along this pathway and lo and behold it will move and become a Langerhans cell and that can move in other directions as well and may explain why in fact there are patients described in the literature that have more than one of these. So there are a number of patients in the literature that are described with LCH and juvenile xanthogranuloma and also LCH and reside Dorfman disease, although these are not common descriptions, but they do occur that you do get, um, and these can occur at the same time, or you can get first one and then the patient recurs and lo and behold they've got one of the others. But be, there is this interrelationship between these cells of the immune system which, which exists and, and may help to explain that. So when we look at it from a clinical point of view, it's a whole slew of different diagnoses, particularly when you talk about adult skin disorders. There's a, a, any number, there's at least 10, 10 of them. But I think from a clinical point of view, the way to think of it is that they can be divided into those that commonly involve the skin and very uncommonly, but do some of them have involvement of or internal organs or systemic involvement. And then there's a, a disorder that is mainly skin, but always has a systemic component and is a major part of the disease. And those that are really by nature involving 
uh, other organs, but may have skin involvement, but that's not the important part. And when you look at it, um, the skin ones, the most, it's, uh, it's again, as you can see, a, a number of diseases. In white are the ones that occur in children and can occur in adults, and then there's a number that occur only in adults that I'm not going to discuss at all unless somebody wants, um, wants some discussion of that. But these two do occur in children, and as, you, as I mentioned when I talked about the newborn, this would be the third commonest histiocytic disorder, um, juvenile xanthogranuloma. And then the disorder that's mainly skin, but has this very important um, component of major disabling arthritis, a disease of the older adult, you can see here in red. And again, I'm not going to talk about that unless somebody wants to. And then finally, the systemic disease, where you may or may not have skin, but it's not really an important part of the disease, and that's Reside-Dorfman disease. And then this disease of the older patient, which is known as Erdheim-Chester disease. Now I just wanted to take a little bit of a side thing here and just mention, I don't know if anybody watches the, the TV series House, but in one of the episodes of House, the patient supposedly had Erdheim-Chester disease. So if you see that particular episode, that is not Erdheim-Chester disease in any shape or form. Anyway, so just a digression. The slide was which, the one with the hand? Uh, that was multicentric reticular histiocytosis, and that occurs in middle age to elderly adults, and really is classically has this very disabling um, arthropathy of hand. Uh, you know, but it involves the hands, uh, small uh, small joints of the hands. There are other manifestations as well, but um, that's the classic one.